Hey guys, this is Substitute Topher. Today we are driving a 2022 Mercedes-Benz C300 4Matic. This is powered by a two liter turbocharged inline four cylinder engine with a mild hybrid. It makes 255 horsepower and 295 pound feet of torque. Power is sent to all four wheels via a nine speed automatic transmission. Today we're gonna walk you around this Mercedes C300 and then we will take it out on the road and uh, I'm gonna talk about what it's been like to live with this thing for a week. This is now day seven with this C300 and uh, it's been quite a good week with this car. I like it quite a bit more than I thought I would. So I'm excited to take you guys out for a drive. But before we do that, let's hop out and take a walk around this thing. So this is the W206 generation C-Class. It's the newest one and 22 is actually the first model year for this car. It is now 2023, so this car is a year old and we're actually the last people to be driving this car. It's got about 8,000 miles on it, so it is well seasoned and well broken in. And uh, from the outside, it's quite a modest spec, but I really like the way that Mercedes has kept it classy with this new W206. It's not a huge departure from the last generation, the W205, but you can definitely tell that it's an updated new generation of C-Class. And I kind of think it looks a bit like the S-Class. It's kind of like a little baby S-Class, and I really, really do appreciate that. And something is happening. Stand by. I want to note that today we are running on Pirelli Soto Zero snow tires. They are an 18-inch tire. Normally, this car would have 19s on it, but they're a little bit smaller for our winter setup. They've done a pretty good job this week gripping in the dry. I didn't actually drive this car when we had the big snowstorm. I was busy that night, but for just a regular all-rounder dry performance, they seem to do pretty well. This car would normally have 19-inch wheels with the packages that it has on it. And to go off of that, let's talk about the main package that's going to change the exterior design of this car, and that is the AMG Night Package. It changes the entire front fascia of the car, makes it look quite a bit more aggressive, more like an AMG car, even though this is just a C300. But we get a totally different front fascia. We get some different little materials in the inside, and then we also get the 19-inch AMG wheels, except we don't have those right now because I just said that we were on the snow tires. But anyways, that's the outside. It looks pretty dang good. I mean, I got to give Mercedes credit here. Uh, unlike some of their German competitors, we'll say, they're keeping it classy. They're not going crazy. And you know what? I can respect that. Here's our trunk space. Pretty decent. And even more space under our trunk floor here. No spare tire in this C300, but you do have quite a bit of room under there to place things or hide things, whatever you want to do here in this C300. We have a power trunk, which I can take or leave. You know, I'm not the biggest fan of power trunks on cars. I think that they're a little bit pointless, but this one seems to operate without too much of a headache. Goes up and down pretty quick and doesn't make any sort of weird mechanical noises or anything. Take a look here into our back seat and you get a sneak peek here at the Burmester 15 speaker 3D sound system. We'll take a listen to that later on in the review. This car just has black interior. Like I said, a really modest spec here on the C-Class. They didn't go crazy specking this, but you can get a brown or even a super bright red interior in this car. So that's worth taking a look at if you are specking one. If I was specking one, I wouldn't go for black interior, but I will say it does look classy here in the C-Class. We've got leather on the top of our door panels and uh, through the middle, not on the bottom. We do have some scratchy plastic there, but remember it is still a C-Class. We've got a center armrest here, which looks like it would have cup holders and it honestly might, but I can't for the life of me figure out how to get them to pop out. That's all it does. So I don't know, comment what I'm doing wrong with that, but otherwise not too much back here. Beautiful ambient lighting, of course, but also just a couple of vents make nice clicks when you turn them on and off. No climate panel. And as far as room goes, I am five foot 11, sat behind myself. I have enough room. These seats are actually designed in such a way where they kind of arch back to give the rear passengers uh, optimal leg room here. And they're doing a pretty good job. You could definitely fit four adults in here with no problem. And I've got a good amount of headroom as well, partially because of this optional thousand dollar panoramic roof that this car has split here in the middle. But uh, while the shade is open, you get a little bit of extra headroom. So kind of neat. Take a look up here at the front, the dashboard design, all very updated. Where this car really looks new is in the interior. If you take a look at the previous gen, it looks so outdated and this new car really brings everything up to the current uh, century, not century, 
decade. That's the word I was looking for. And uh, we'll go ahead and step up front. First, we'll look under the hood actually at that uh, two liter turbo. And then we'll talk about some of the things up in the interior up front. The hood release is actually hidden under here. It's a red switch right there that you have to search for under the dashboard. It took me a while to find it the first time I did it. If you watch the winding road video, you'll see me searching around for it. And big surprise, a big piece of plastic here under the hood, but uh, a large hood. You can see that we've got a lot of room in here, a lot of uh, bracing around here, and uh, a lot of things to soften the impact if you are, uh, God forbid, to wreck this thing. You've got a lot of room up here, a lot of crumple zones. Makes this thing look quite safe. Like I mentioned, mild hybrid system with this two liter turbo smoothens things out, fills in all the torque gaps. And when you start this thing, it makes like no noise at all. That's what I love most about mild hybrids is they just smoothen everything out, soften everything and make the car feel just that much more luxurious. So uh, props to Mercedes for giving us a mild hybrid here in the C-Class. And I also just want to note the C300 is the base car. This is as base as you can get for a C-Class because you're going up into AMG cars after this. So this one does have 4Matic, it's all wheel drive. That's an optional extra, um, but this is pretty dang close to base. You can see this interior pack. This is the Napa leather, I believe they call it. It's about a $2,000 add-on. Uh, standard, you would get MB Tex, which is a faux leather, but this is real leather that we have in this car. Pretty soft, not quite as soft as something like a Lexus, but it gets the job done. That window is down. And I don't remember doing that. I may have touched it when I opened the door. I don't know. Okay, let's hop in here. AMG branded floor mats, which I think is kind of silly in a non AMG car, but whatever. And up front, the first thing you notice, or at least the first thing I notice, is all of this ambient lighting. Mercedes is still the king of ambient lighting, and they've just gone absolutely over the top here with this new C-Class. Obviously, if you get into something like an S-Class, it's even brighter and more in your face, or the EQS, that car's crazy as well. But in something like a C-Class, I mean, this is pretty close to the bottom of the sedan lineup and you still get beautiful ambient lighting. And this is an argument to be made actually to get black interior because you could argue that the ambient lighting looks better with less color in here, which means it's not gonna clash with anything. You can pick any color you want and it'll look really, really nice with your black interior. So maybe the black interior does make a bit of sense. I've got this on ultramarine right now and we'll cycle through some more ambient lighting when it gets a little darker out because I want you guys to be able to see it a little bit better. So this car has the uh, matte wood with aluminum accents. It's like a $200 add-on, I believe, and it looks quite nice. In fact, let's go ahead and grab the Monroney out. We'll talk about a couple options that are on this car. So base price of the C300 is about 45 grand. This car has $18,000 in options. This is about as loaded as you can make a C300. Just about every box has been ticked. And like I said here, this AMG line package, it's a $3,000 option. It is the most expensive option on this car. And Mercedes does actually offer you quite a few individual options that other brands kind of don't do anymore. For example, separate options include acoustic glass, heated steering wheel, panorama roof, ventilated seats, and a dash cam. Is there a dash cam on this? No, oh, it's probably on this. That would make more sense, right? Yeah, so dash cam, that's a $200 option. All in all though, $63,440 for this C300 4Matic. So pretty dang expensive. But if you wanted a bargain base model car still with 4Matic, you'd be looking at right around 45,000 with no options. So not a terrible price. Stick that back in there. And everything in here just feels so nice. It feels way, way nicer than I thought. I went into this car with low expectations, which is often good. I don't like to go into cars thinking that they're gonna be the coolest thing ever because then you're often let down. But I went into this with low expectations just because like, it's not an S class, it's not an E class, it's the C class. I didn't think it would feel that nice, but they've really, really, um, they've really done a great job with this W206. And if you haven't been in one, I definitely suggest you go in one, uh, poke around, feel all the materials because everything feels quite nice. Split folding armrest here. I've got my beanie in the middle, pretty decent room. <laughs> this car has what's called the advanced USB package. So you get two USBs in the middle and then you get two more here in this other console. So four USB-C ports, no USB-A ports. So ditch your USB-A cords if you're gonna get the new C-Class. I've got my phone lined in here for Apple CarPlay, but you do have the option to go wireless if you would like. 
Sun visors move, extend, block the whole window. Nice, good to see. Uh, okay, before we go, let's talk about some of the electronics in here because this is probably the biggest controversy with this new C-Class. They've gone away from a lot of physical controls. In fact, there aren't really any physical controls in here. You've got a very small button panel down here. None of the buttons on here are actually physical. They're all haptic touch. So for your drive modes here on the left, you can switch through like this. Go through individual sport plus sport comfort and eco parking cameras are down here with a physical button as well and you can cycle through those front rear camera side cameras all that stuff you've got a button here to give you quick access to driving settings heads up display traction control steering assist manual shifting and whatever else you can set a tow away alarm so if you're parked in the city and your car starts to get towed away it will uh start to sound the alarm or if you perhaps miss one of your payments and the repo man comes to take it the car will let you know you can have that mode on hazard switch in the middle which is actually the only physical button in this entire stack is the hazard switch which i guess makes sense that's a fingerprint recognition thing which i'm not going to do You've got a power switch, a mute, and also a volume slider here for your entertainment. No volume knob in this C-Class, but I've gotten used to this slider, and I don't hate it as much as I did when I drove the newest Gen S-Class. Uh, it feels a little bit more streamlined in this car. You can actually click it, which is nice. I don't love the one on the steering wheel. I've been using this one all week. I have not touched the one on the steering wheel because I do not like how it feels at all, mostly because it doesn't have any feeling. Uh, okay, so that covers that. We won't spend a ton of time in here. I just want to show you guys the basics. Climate control, that never goes anywhere, which is nice. You can easily set temperature here with these arrows and fan speed as well. You don't have to go into the climate menu, but if you want to, it's here. Home button takes you back to home. The map is your default home screen. You can see whatever song you're listening to on the bottom left here. And at the upper left, you can transport yourself to Apple CarPlay, which takes up pretty much the whole screen or all of the usable space anyways. So that looks quite nice. You can see three apps down, five apps across. That is a big Apple CarPlay uh, display. So that looks pretty good. How do I get home now? Okay, home. I like this. It's just a nice kind of chill uh, display here of the map. The cluster is a whole other thing. And I actually discovered this today. I've been living with this car for a week. And I did not know that if you hold down on the home button, you can switch your entire theme of not only the cluster, but the entire of both screens. So right now we're on classic. It's just the traditional Mercedes look. But you can also do what's called understated. It gives you a purple theme. You can see what song I'm listening to there. And also there's like a pyramid here with light growing, going through it. And that turns your RPM gauge into a clock. Yes, it does. Okay. Not a huge... It's pretty, but I don't really want to drive with it. You've got sport. Turns everything red. Probably also wouldn't use that because I'm not in an AMG. Classic, which I have been using and you guys already saw. You can make your whole screen a nav screen if you'd like, which I think is really cool. It's very Audi of them to do something like this. You've got a, oh, come back. You've got assistance, which puts up your driver aids if you have lane keep assist on. And this is also a really cool design here with mountains on either side. And then you've got service if you really want to know your coolant temperature and oil level and service intervals, tire pressures, all of that is stored in the screen here. Today we're going to be driving in classic mode because that gives you just the regular gauges and it's what I prefer by far. Okay, we've been sitting here for long enough. Apologies if I missed anything, but th this is the thing about Mercedes cars of this generation is they're very overwhelming at first. And the first couple days I was driving this car, I was very overwhelmed, I was very frustrated with going through and learning how to control everything because like i said they don't have buttons anymore nothing is very obvious you have to take a deep dive into these menus to see how anything works but what i will say is after a week or so it does get easier and just today i think that i've figured out and mastered how to do everything in this car and uh, it's not frustrating anymore and it's one of the disadvantages that we have as reviewers is that we only spend a week with these cars. So you can get some impressions from people that only drive these cars for a week and they can tell you that everything in here is very frustrating to use, but they haven't spent enough time with it to, to really tell you that. So what I'm telling you is if you spend a week or more with the car, you'll be fine. There's no need to worry about not having physical controls. You get used to everything and it's really not so bad. Whew. Okay, let's go ahead and get the C300 out on the road. 
We've got a column shifter, which I love. It feels nice, opens up space in here, and makes everything feel quite luxurious. Their speed was being reduced there for some reason. Super light steering and quick steering, as you can see there. Pretty fast lock to lock action. Not the most precise steering for driving fast, but for maneuvering around parking lots and just day-to-day -day driving this thing, it is really, really great. And it's actually one of my favorite parts about this C300. A lot of people bash on the steering in this car, but I mean, with a car like this, I don't want the steering to feel sporty. I mean, I've, I'm gonna get an AMG car if I want sporty steering. So I do not mind at all that the steering is on the lighter side here in the C300. The powertrain is pretty good as well. Uh, it's not quite as smooth as the four cylinder that you get in the BMW 330i. This makes a little bit more noise, but the mild hybrid helps fill the gaps, like I said, and um, you know, it's still adequate and it still has plenty of power. And you'll see that when we pull out here on the road, take it easy here at first. I like the Mercedes blinker noise. <laughs> okay. All right, let's go. So it's quick enough, close to 300 pound feet of torque. And that nine speed automatic delivers some butter smooth shifts. I've had no weird lurches or anything this week. Let's try out sport mode. Sport mode is gonna sharpen everything up just a little bit. Also get a bit of piped in engine noise if you go into sport or sport plus mode. Not the biggest fan of that. It doesn't sound horrible and it's not overly loud. Brake pedal feel, also something that I don't love about this C300. Mercedes has kind of been struggling with their brake pedal feel in their non-AMG cars. I don't know what the disconnect is. It could be because of the mild hybrid system. It just, it feels very vague. You've got a lot of room of squish and then it all comes on at the bottom, which I don't love. Sport mode will hold those gears a little bit longer. Sport Plus will sharpen everything up even more. And also, uh, oh no, okay. I can engage manual shifting here. If you don't wanna lock it into manual shifting, you can just tap one of the paddles, but then eventually it'll default you back into automatic. So I like to lock it in here uh, in the screen, which is kind of a pain, but whatever. Nice rotation through there. <laughs> a little bit of squeal from those Pirelli Sotozeros. <laughs> this is all the performance that you really need though in a, in a C300. If you want more, then go get a C43 or a C63. All right, we're gonna briefly go back into comfort. And that'll default us back into drive, which is nice because this is a bit of a rougher section up here, so we'll do a bit of a ride test and see how it handles it. Okay, yeah. The ride is good. It's a little bit on the stiffer side, but it's not offensive. For day-to-day -day driving, I haven't noticed anything uncomfortable with this car. I think it, some of it has to do with how comfy these seats are as well. Okay, let's go ahead and do a zero to 60. We'll brake boost it. Uh, we're gonna leave it in automatic mode so it'll do gear changes itself. Um, but we'll go ahead and get the engine fired back up here very quietly with a mild hybrid. There's 60, feels like about, I don't know, six, six and a half seconds, something like that. 
plenty athletic for a C300. Got to remember that this is competing with cars like the BMW 330i and just the basic Audi A4, basic Genesis G70. The BMW 330i, in comparison to this, it's definitely faster in a straight line. It's definitely faster around corners. But for a daily driver, I prefer the C-Class. If I want to go quickly in my day-to-day -day car, I guess I'd have the 330i. But, man, I've, I've really been enjoying the C-Class. Transmission does a pretty good job in sport mode with deciding its own gears. So I mentioned earlier that this car has heated and cooled seats, or at least I hope I did. Uh, you access that over here on the left hand side, you press your heated seat button there. What this car also has is a heated steering wheel, and you'll see that indicated here on the cluster. When you turn the heated seat on, it turns the heated steering wheel on, and I have not found all week a way to only turn the heated steering wheel on. For the life of me, I cannot work out how to do it, which is hilarious. There's no button in here. I cannot find it in the screen if it is in the screen. I just think that that is really funny. I think that it just automatically senses with this. Okay, let's do an entrance ramp. gonna hit the limits of these snow tires before we hit the limit of the car. Yeah, it rotates really nice. You can feel that back end come around. Back into comfort we go. And that's got rapid heating, so that seat is already burning me after about one minute. <laughs> and so is the steering wheel. That gets real hot quick too. So we do have lane keep assist on this car. You can turn it on and off via the touchscreen. Big surprise. Uh, cruise control, do that here on the steering wheel. You can set it and this will steer for you. It does a pretty good job. Mercedes, I think, is at the top with this luxury segment for steering assist. It'll also change lanes for you. Or maybe it won't. I was thinking about it. When you're on the highway highway, it'll change lanes for you. It might not on a 55 mile an hour road like this. Let's see if it will. Let's so we're straight here. Nope, it won't. Well, just take my word for it. When you're on the highway, a 70 mile an hour highway, it'll do the whole lane change for you. And it makes a lot more sense than the system you get on a Genesis because you don't have to have your hands on the steering wheel for this one to work, whereas in a Genesis you do and it just defeats the whole purpose of, of it, in, in my opinion. So now that uh, it's gotten a little bit darker out, we can take a look at one of my favorite things about this C-Class, which is the ambient lighting. Access that via the comfort menu, and they give you quite a few built-in choices here. You can, of course, go to monochrome and just pick whatever color you want, but I like to go to the multicolor preset colors and just kind of cycle through those. My favorite is ultramarine, but we do have quite a few choices, and all of them are really beautiful. Miami Rose is another really good one. These will also cycle through animations, so the top color and the bottom color, the vents, the floor, it'll all change color. It'll all shift as you're driving. Not so fast that it's distracting, but uh, just enough that it's quite pleasant. There's Malibu Sunset, another one of my favorites. Nice pinks and blues in this one. We're gonna come up to this parking lot here and we'll we'll go through the rest of them. Yeah, over some of the rougher stuff, these 18 inch wheels definitely help. I wouldn't wanna drive this car on 19s. I think that'd be right at about the limit of what would be doable with this car. Shoot, man, give me this thing on some 17s. I wouldn't argue about that. Man, we're gonna have to use our formatic to plow through this. Okay, we're gonna have some Mercedes undercarriage imprints there on that snow. <laughs> All right, we'll look at the sunset and we'll cycle through some of these colors. 
So what are we on? Malibu Sunset. This one is burning blue. So we've got some blue and yellow tones here with this. Venice Pink. This one is pretty much just pink. There might be some white. Or maybe it's red. Yeah, it's red and pink. Chrome Shine. That is just white. And some very light blue. Pretty simple one. Red Moon. Another one of my favorites. This one's very pretty. My favorite four are definitely Red Moon. Uh, what's this one? Miami Rose, Malibu Sunset, and Ultramarine. Those are my favorites. Jungle Green, self-explanatory. This one, Fresh Cyan. I think that's how you say that. Racing Yellow. AMG little Easter egg there. And Racing Orange as well. Pretty neat. And Monochrome just lets you pick a solid color. Purple, of course, looks great. Red gets very bright if you pick a red one. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I mean, you can even have cream. You have like a cream colored light, blue, whatever. Yeah, blue gets super bright. Looks really nice on camera. We're going to stick with ultramarine, I think, here. Uh, okay, well, what, do, what else do we have left to cover? Not too much else. I mean, you guys can tell that I do really, really quite enjoy this C300. It's been really nice to live with. It's been a nice car to go out at night, drive, enjoy this ambient lighting, enjoy this smooth powertrain, and also enjoy this Burmester 3D uh, 15 speaker sound system, which is what we're about to do a test on. We'll play a song uh, and we'll go for the rest of our drive back to the original parking lot. But if you guys were just here to see the car and not the sound system, we'll do one last walk around for you before we do the sound system test. We definitely picked up some snow there in the front. <laughs> I've been using this C300 as a snow plow all week. Now you guys can see how it performs. <laughs> all right, cool. Well, if you guys are going to go ahead and take off now, thank you all so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one. But if you want to stick around for this Burmester sound system, here we go. If you are an avid watcher of the Topher, you will recognize the song that I'm about to play. I'm a big fan of this Burmester 3D sound system, especially for this class of car. It's certainly better than the Harman Kardon that you get in the BMW 3 Series, and it's better than also the, uh, what do you get in the Audi? Bang & Olufsen, I believe. This would be top of the class, class leading here for this segment. This Burmester does a great job. So we'll go ahead and wrap up some thoughts. We're gonna take this corner one more time because why not? Getting into that brake pedal, so much squish. I'm still not comfortable with that brake pedal.
plenty of torque to get us out of that corner. Held the gear plenty of time. Okay. Shutter down into comfort mode. There we go, comfort. So overall, it's, it's a really, really good car. And I genuinely was not expecting that. I, and I mean that in the nicest way possible. I have pretty much liked every Mercedes that I've driven. The one that kind of threw me off is a couple of years ago, we had the E-Class. It was like an E400 or something. And it wasn't super nice. And this C-Class, it they definitely went above and beyond with this car because this is a segment that will definitely stick around, I think, longer than the E-Class, 5 Series, and uh, A6 segment. A lot more people buy the C-Class, and a lot of people are going to be very happy with this car. It delivers a lot of luxury, a lot of very, very exquisite feel. You can tell that they've taken a lot of time with the materials they've selected for this interior. And it's readily available for 45 grand. And if you want to go crazy and spec it with all the AMG line and glass roof and heated and cooled seats and heated steering wheel and all that stuff, sure, you can go get it up into the $55,000, $60,000 range. But even at that price, even at $64,000, it doesn't feel outrageous. And that really says something about this pretty basic Mercedes. So good job, Mercedes, with the W206. You've done a good job with just about everything. Styling, sound system, powertrain. It's all pretty good. My only real complaints are the brake pedal and the ride could maybe be a little bit smoother, but it's all right. Nice solid feeling turn signal stock, which doubles as a wiper stock here. And I think this car has the best automatic wipers out of anything I've driven. They always know what to do. Automatic wipers are very hit and miss. Mercedes does a good job. We also get a power adjust steering column. Good luxury car things here in the C300. And now hopefully you guys can really see that ambient lighting. Really comes to life. It's an experience driving a Mercedes at night. I mean, no one else even really gets close. I always love when we have Mercedes cars. I always find a reason to go out at night um, just so I can stare at all these, well not stare at the lights, but be surrounded by the lights. Yeah, they do a great job. See that mild hybrid shutting us off a little bit before zero miles per hour there before a stop. You can hear that parking brake coming on. And that's it. Hey, remember your phone. She also says some iteration of this every time you get out, if you leave your phone in the car, there's about six different phrases that she says, I guess so one doesn't get old and so it doesn't drive you crazy. So there it is, the 22 Mercedes C300. Quite a treat, and I'm going to be sad to see it go tomorrow. But if you were looking for a reason to buy the new C-Class, well, hopefully there was some helpful information for you in this video. You can see by the state of this car, it's quite dirty. I have been giving it the proper runaround this week. So definitely substitute tow for certified here. Pretty good thing. Thank you guys all so much for watching. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments. I'll be looking through, and if I missed anything, I'll be happy to answer those for you. Well, thank you all again so much, and we'll see you in the next one. Take care.